What does it take to become a world-class HR practitioner? There's never been a more challenging time where HR has been asked to step up and deliver. And across the world, HR functions have risen to the challenge to shape a bold new way of working. In this series, we're going to take you inside the lives and minds of the world's top HR executives who are shaping the future of work for business and society. In each episode, we'll explore the passions and hobbies they pursue outside of the office and the behaviours, skills and routines that you need to perform at the top of the profession. I'm Chris Rainey and this is Out of Office. As you can probably already realise by the sign behind me, today we're in Milton Keynes at DHL Supply Chain to meet our good friend Lindsay Bridges, who's a Senior Vice President of HR, UK and Ireland. Hi Lindsay, how are you? I'm good, thanks Chris, how are you? Not too bad, not too bad. So where are we today? Fill everyone in. So we are at our new facility here in Milton Keynes. It's called the Milton Keynes Digital Centre. And this facility has got two aspects to it. One is our warehouse operation, where we do a lot of servicing for technology customers and some servicing for our own um, internal technology that we use. Uh, and this building, a bit of the building that we're in now, is our HR Shared Service Centre. We call that People Services. Nice. And have you, have you just got back then? Yeah, team's just coming back in, um, getting used to kind of the new way of working. But as you can see, you know, there's quite a lot of space in this facility. And mm -hmm. I think people are excited about coming back to work. Well, let's start straight in then. Um, what would you say is your purpose? And then how is this realised in the work that you do? It's come to me more recently around purpose, being very much about making sure can, people can bring their authentic selves to work every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, that means being very open and honest about what I am and what I'm thinking and, um, and encouraging others to do the same and particularly doing that through our d &I agenda and really encouraging people to be as, as open as they can feel comfortable being and even push the bounds of that comfortableness mm -hmm. in terms of bringing themselves to work. Well, on that point then, you took it as far as actually starting your own show, your own podcast, which is really cool. Tell everyone about that. Yeah, so we, we decided at the beginning of this year with our marketing team that we wanted to really put out to the market internally and externally what we're doing around diversity and inclusion. So yeah, I host a monthly podcast, <laughs> uh, mostly with people from within our business, um, just getting them to talk about, tell a story really. How would your friends and family describe what you do for a living? Oh, that's interesting. So when my daughter was, was much younger, uh, she's 22 now, but when she was much younger, she just thought I fired people, that's what I did. <laughs> Mummy fires people. Mummy goes like, to work and fires people every thanks day. Thanks for that. Um, no, actually, I think, um, you know, if I use my daughter as the example, mm -hmm. she's, uh, she's great. You know, bouncing ideas off a 22-year-old around, particularly around the D&I agenda, yeah, is true. really, really interesting because her perspective is so different to mine. I love it. How have you taken care of your own well-being over the last 16 plus months? It's been a very challenging time for everyone. So exercise, as I said, is how mm -hmm. I start my day. And, and I realized at the start of lockdown that I wasn't doing enough. You know, my daughter was walking the dog and coming back at seven o'clock at night and I was still sitting on the computer and it was just kind of crazy. And one of my colleagues challenged me to do 10,000 steps a day in the month of June last year. And I did that. And then she said in August, no, we're upping it to 12,000 steps a day. This is getting too competitive. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> competition's good for me. Yeah. Um, and that's what we did. We, we kind of increased that exercise and I've kept that up all the way through. And, and Chris, I'm really glad I did because in February this year, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. um, and since then, up until three weeks ago, I've been going through chemotherapy, which I've worked all the way through and, and managed all the way through. And I'm due to have surgery in, um, in August. Mm -hmm. to to remove the lump and then I've got some radiotherapy and all the rest of it and I'm totally convinced that if I hadn't got on that exercise routine I probably wouldn't be as responding as well as I have been through this yeah. treatment. You seem first of all sorry to hear that but secondly you seem very positive and upbeat and I know you've you've made a, a conscious effort to share this with the team as well right? Yeah I've been very open about the cancer yes. diagnosis because people don't talk about it no. and they should mm -hmm. And back to that purpose, if I'm going to bring myself to work every day, well, this is part of me at the minute. I don't like it, wouldn't choose it, yeah. but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, so I have been, been very open about it to people and I think it is important that we talk about this. And I think it's important that people, you know, do self-examine and actually if I can help promote that, well, that's a good thing. And you mentioned to me as well, there are a number of colleagues that reach out to you 
during this time they've been through similar experiences yeah. as well. Yeah, and that's been really good. And we've been sharing and I've been learning from them and they've been learning from me because, you know, as you go through this, this journey, it's, um, it's good to talk to other people. Mm -hmm. Has it made you also reflect as a, as, as a HR leader on your healthcare that you provide to employees as well? Yeah, it's interesting. A couple of years ago, we improved some of the healthcare benefits around cancer care specifically, and mm -hmm. I'm really very grateful for that. Personally, yeah. right now, I can see the value of it. But I think our biggest challenge is promoting those mm -hmm. healthcare benefits to people. We and take it for sure. granted sometimes, don't we? We do, or we don't even know what's We don't there. know what we've got. Exactly, and, mm -hmm. and promoting that art is, is a real challenge to us. What would you say is a common misconception people have about you? People think I'm a workaholic. I think they're right. No, they're definitely <laughs> not. Um, when, when our daughter was born 22 years ago, my husband gave up work and I became the full-time work person. Mm -hmm. But that meant he did all the kind of home stuff during the week, which meant we had our weekends free as a family. I really, I rarely work at the weekend. And people don't really believe that or don't see that. But it is true. <laughs> I've only, I'm not only you that long, but even that's hard for me to believe. <laughs> you don't work on a weekend. So you just work really, really, really hard Monday to Friday and to make yeah, sure you open up. pretty much. Not Friday night, but pretty much, yeah. <laughs> as much as you can. Yeah. As much as you can. If you were sitting in a room right now with a group of HR executives, and you can only ask them one question, mm -hmm. what would that be? How do you get your messages to land all the way through the organization consistently? Ooh. It's a huge frustration to me. You get so far mm. and then it gets- What layer do you think is the difficult, the most difficult to so in our engage? In our business, I think we can get down to our, our site leaders, our general manager yeah. for our sites. And then I think it becomes quite, quite challenging to get through maybe two or three management layers to every warehouse colleague, to every driver that we have. Drivers in particular, because they don't routinely come together. So to, to get, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, well, I suppose technology is one part of it, but it's definitely not the only answer yeah. as well. So, well, we'll leave that for everyone else listening as well. Absolutely. <laughs> Everyone's got the answer, I want to hear it. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure, I'm sure they're thinking, mm, yeah, exactly the same. What's one thing in your career that you've had to learn the hard way? Probably more recently in the, in the diversity and inclusion space, mm -hmm. um, the whole kind of, you know, what do you say, how do you say the right thing? How do you not say the wrong thing? Um, I, I was talking to a colleague um, about Black Lives Matter uh, a few months ago now, and I inadvert inadvertently said something that I shouldn't have. I, I said it wrong. I got something wrong. And I didn't realize at the time. And, um, and actually, fair play to her, she, she told me afterwards that what I'd said probably wasn't you know, the right way to express it. And I learned from it. Now, it was great she was able to tell me that, but mm. I do worry in that space sometimes. You think to yourself, easy. like, how many times have I said something before and not realized, yeah. and no one said something right? And how, you know, have I offended somebody? I mean, that'd be awful if I had, because mm -hmm. you don't intend to. Yeah. And it's empowering people to feel they can come and tell you. One of the interesting things over the last year, you know, the, 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 the CHRO's role has been compared to the CFO's role, you know, in the last cri financial mm. crisis. Um, what do you think that we need to do to sustain this me momentum we've gained in HR? Yeah. See, I kind of see what you're saying, but I'm not quite sure I totally agree with no. it, to be honest. I mean, I think, and certainly the world I come from in, in DHL supply chain here, HR has always been a credible player with a seat at the table. So I don't think that it's changed that much in terms of the last year. Um, but I think what we do need to do to continue to be there is, is to be really close to our operations, understand our customers, our operations, and what's actually what's making the money for whatever organisation that we're working. Fantastic. Well, look, thank you so much for having us. It's been a real pleasure. It's been nice to get outside the office <laughs> and see you as well. No, thank you for coming, and thanks for coming around and, and being interested in terms of what we do here at the site and, the, uh, and seeing the operations. I hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure you tune in next week. We're going to be off to the Key and Prince Foundation Stadium, home of the Queen's Park Rangers Football Club, to meet QPR fanatic and Chief Talent Officer at the Ford Motor Company, Chris Yates. <laughs>